So this beautiful, desolate, people-free beach right here, this little oasis, there's one of three ways you can get here. The first way is you can bushwhack through the jungle like I've just been doing. The second way is you can have a trillion dollars and you can be able to afford a piece of property like this. And then the third way is a small boat like the Saturn K boat, 14 foot model, like the one Elizabeth's pulling up on right now. And today we're presenting you with our six month review of our 14 foot Saturn K boat. Not to be confused with the Alaskan model, which is also known as the Outfitter. Let's start out with some specs like the weight. Here it lies naked without oars, motor, or seats. It's about 57 pounds, but shipping weight is a little over 70. Now that comes into play if you are outside of the continental US or live in a remote area where shipping is not gonna be included. So for us, we live in Guam and we had to have it shipped stateside first and then across the world to where we are. As we've stated, this boat is 14 feet. However, you lose almost two feet in the back from the transom to the end for the space for the motor. So realistically inside, it's about 12. The max capacity for this boat is about 340 kilograms or this many pounds. The manufacturer recommendation for a horsepower on this boat is gonna be different for two and four. Two stroke is gonna be up to 10 horsepower, whereas four is gonna be up to eight horsepower. Here on Guam, we only had the option of a two stroke eight horsepower, so that's what we've got on here. In our personal experience, eight horsepower motor is more than enough. Once Chris has it at full throttle, it actually starts to bow in the middle because it's an inflatable floor as opposed to a hard bottom boat. Um, the benefit though is that it is a gas sipper, so we can go out all day trolling and we barely go through half a tank of gas. The benefit of the gas sipping is not due to our motor, but rather because of the boat. It's so narrow that it's not really pushing a lot of water out of the way, and it's really light and basically hydrodynamic, so you're not burning a lot of gas to get anywhere. The internal width is about 14 inches, just big enough for your not Yeti if you're probably buying this boat, but a nice big Rubbermaid, which this one is 67 quarts. And we still have a little room on the side to put any of our snorkel gear. Previously, I mentioned the Alaskan or Outfitter version of this boat. It's worth mentioning because that one has four chambers as opposed to two. So that's two chambers per side. The downside with this having two chambers is that if one happens to pop, you don't have a backup. The Alaskan uh, Outfitter also has thicker PVC and it's more sturdy, but the downside is that it's more expensive to ship because it's heavier. And that was our biggest limitation for living here on Guam and having it shipped here. Okay, so she went over some more of the facts and figures kind of stuff, and I'm not a math guy, so let's go over some of the real world stuff. So this boat, um, if you want to stay dry, this is not the boat for you. It would be okay on a pond or a river or a calm lake, but any kind of chop out in the ocean, because you sit so low to the water and because the boat is so narrow, it doesn't matter if there's little splash rails on here or not, you're going to get wet in this boat. Um, you can see some of this footage of us fishing. We get wet every single time. Even just a small bit of chop, you're going to get wet in this boat, which is fine. I never feel unsafe in this boat. It's very stable, even though it's narrow, but just know you're going to get wet if there's any kind of chop. Pumping it up. The manual says that you can pump this boat up in like five to ten minutes. Key man if you could pump this boat up in five minutes. Uh, more realistically, you're probably looking at 10 minutes, um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if every time you know you go to the boat ramp, you had to run on a treadmill for five or 10, 15 minutes, you're gonna start hating going to the boat ramp. It's great not having a trailer, and we can fit this inside of our Toyota Camry. So even if you don't have a big truck, it's another plus of this boat. You can put it in your small car and you can go places that other people need a big boat and a trailer and all this mess and a place to park it. You could realistically own this and live in an apartment. It fits. The downside to that is, is pumping this thing up. So what we've come up with is we half pump this thing or three quarter pump it 
with a shop vac, and a shop, shop vac will blow this thing up almost instantaneously. And so we'll pump this thing up before we leave about halfway, and then when we get to where we're going, we unfold it, and it only takes a couple of minutes uh, to finish pumping this thing off. We were a little worried about climbing in and out of this boat. Uh, we've recently gotten to spear fishing, and we like to do a lot of uh, free diving or snorkeling. And we were worried about climbing in and out of this boat because before we had a tandem kayak. And that was really sketchy getting in and out of climbing it. But this boat, you can climb in and out all over it, and you're never worried about it flipping over. You're never really worried about being unstable in this boat, which I was surprised because it's so narrow. You, you can stand up inside this boat if you really want to, especially if it's just one person. But if there's any kind of... Uh, a chop in the water, any kind of waves like that, you're not going to be real stable. You're not going to feel comfortable standing up casting in this with any kind of rough water. So the open ocean is not exactly what this cable is made for. I know there's reviews out there of the, the probably the best review of the guy who takes it out to Catalina Island sometimes from California. Um, but the open ocean is not the greatest place for this boat. Where this boat is built for though is this tight little river we're on right now. We have gone incredibly far up in this tight little river with this little gas motor and it's really stable. We've been standing up and we've both been fishing off this thing standing up all day and as long as you're careful, um, I couldn't imagine a boat that would be better for this. As you can see from some of this drone footage where we boat and pull up to the beach, a lot of time there's a reef and we're dealing in shallow water and that boat, this boat is amazing in it. Shallow water with the motor kicked up like this, we can coast right into places that I thought we would have had to get out and walked long ago. So that's really saved us a lot when the reef line's really long. Flip side of that, there's always a downside to everything, is because you sit so low in the water, you're not able to like stand up and look around and see those reefs and rock lines um, that you can, like if you're in a bigger center console boat where you have a better uh, sight line. There's the three seats that go in here, they're metal seats. We usually don't use them, they just take up space. And then, uh, so my favorite thing in this boat is to not use the seats that it came with. Um, but when I wanna have a cool beer, let's say we're not catching much fish or we're bottom fishing, is you sit sideways in this boat and your feet just kind of dangle in the water and you have a beer and it's one of the most comfortable experiences in my life. It's like being on a lazy boy in the water. So I recommend ditch the seats and just use it like this. Another thing, uh, we thought this was gonna be the perfect boat to put some transom wheels on. This transom is far too narrow to put wheels on with a motor like this. There's not enough room down here in the transom where you're gonna be able to fit those wheels. I cussed at this thing for three hours trying to get it done. Uh, if you use the smaller motor, I've seen some people use a two horse motor or something like that. And again, I realized it was the Alaskan model. The Alaskan model has a two or four inch wider transom. I'm not sure which. For two people and a motor and a cooler, this thing is absolutely perfect. And the only bad thing about it, which if you want to look at it as a bad thing or not, is that you're going to get wet riding this boat, which I don't know, for some people, that's not a bad thing. But uh, in all seriousness, this has been a fun little boat. It's cheap. We bought this thing for about 650 bucks. The shipping here was about 250 bucks. Um, but if you live somewhere in the continental United States, it'd be a lot cheaper than that for you to get it shipped. So we found a lot of use out of this boat for uh, spear fishing, diving, island exploring. We've been camping out of this boat. We've been, been the pouring rain in this thing, um, skimmed over reefs and just had a lot of fun with it. And it does really good in shallow water and all those environments. So thumbs up from Candy Adventures on this. Saturn K-Boat. The benefit of having your own boat is sometimes you just want to be a slob. And those people over there, I don't want them to see this disgusting mess. I don't want them to see Cheeto finger. Hands covered in Cheeto dust. When you got your own boat, even though there's people right over there, they can't see what disgusting thing is happening over here. And it's my birthday. I'm going to have my Cheeto fingers in private and nobody can bother me. And what you can't do from a beach blanket is clean off your Cheeto dust. One more little reason why a nice tiny little boat is a good idea. Are you trying to say that it's not acceptable to finger lick? It's not acceptable to finger lick. Let the good Lord do his work with the ocean. of the boat.